You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches crackling under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some kind. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep into the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing here in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So, maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is a staircase? But, weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay? You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others of brick or stone. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that lead to a tiny platform at the top. Now, why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some scientists think it could have been some sort of ritual tower. But your guess is as good as theirs. There's an anomaly in the Indian Ocean known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually mean denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that is working its way up to the crust. The Nihau Island actually rejects the fruits of today's advancements. There are no cars in sight since the locals get around on foot or by bicycles. No wonder their legs have great definition. They thrive without running water, internet, or shops. The only school on the entire island is powered by solar energy with a backup generator. And what's awesome is that it's the only school in the state that's powered by the sun. Being a resident of the island, the local explains some ground rules the permanent residents must abide by. If they do break these rules, they can be evicted. Now, not far from Bangkok, in northeastern Thailand, there's a 75-million-year-old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert. But the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and an abundance of fauna and flora there. Located on Gamal and Gaiden peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. 
the pits grow wider and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water molecules after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. You're driving to the state of New Mexico, to the small town of Taos. 2% of the locals hear a strange buzzing in the air every day. Some residents believe the sound is somehow connected with technologies used by guests from other galaxies. Ooh. Also, there is a theory that something sinister lives in the town. They say Taos is cursed. An evil spirit or a phantom punishes people for something their ancestors did in the past. Scientists still can't explain the nature of this sound. Another theory says it's caused by unusual acoustics of the location, while others think the buzzing is a hallucination. Some can hear it because everybody talks about something, and our minds create an illusion of the sound that doesn't really exist. The sound isn't the same for everyone, either. For some, it's a low hum. For others, it's more of a buzzing sound. But this is not the only place where you can hear the strange noises. It's called the hum, and people worldwide claim to have heard it. Some dwellers of a small village in Scotland describe it as a low, thick hum. Well, some residents of Florida heard a similar sound, too. It's not exactly known where this phenomenon appeared. But the first time the media started talking about it was in the 1970s in England. Also, there are written records of a mysterious buzzing dating back almost 200 years. According to some estimates, only about 2% of people on the planet can hear the hum. Perhaps their ears pick up some low-frequency waves, or the reason is something else entirely. Maybe, just maybe, they hear humming because the person doing it doesn't know the words to the song. Yeah, that joke is also 200 years old. A volcano in Indonesia spews bright blue lava and produces electric blue and purple flames. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano has some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. You can also know you're near it by its foul stench. But I digress. And when sulfuric gases interact with scorching hot air and get lit by the molten lava, they turn blue. You can also find the world's largest acid lake inside this crater. Yep, it's a real stinker. Underwater rivers and lakes are called brine pools for a reason. High salinity makes the water in them denser than the seawater around. That's why it sinks to the bottom, forming rivers and lakes. Those have waves of their own, and these waves can sometimes lap up against the shorelines. If you went down there in the submarine, it would easily float on the surface of a brine pool. But without a submarine, swimming in such a lake would be too risky. They contain too much toxic methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, I'd pass on that too. But hey, be my guest! Cave of Crystals in Mexico is home to the world's most unique crystal formations. Thanks to super-rare conditions in the cave, crystals there grow to unbelievable sizes. The air inside is incredibly humid. The water contains tons of minerals that boost the growth of the Milky White Giants. Some of them are longer than telephone poles. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust starts to roll some snow across a snowy area, as if making a snowball. If it was a real thing, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But a snow donut's center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes the thing lighter than a snowball. That's also why it rolls further. Unfortunately, snow donuts are rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. The Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is probably one of the most bizarre-looking places you'll ever see. It's dotted with neon-colored hot springs, lava pools, and vast salt flats. You've got to be especially careful there. Toxic gases are swirling over hydrothermal fields, and many pools are super acidic. So, mm, don't go swimming. Until at least 30 minutes after lunch. (laughs) Just kidding. 
And finally, there's nothing mysterious about 28,000 rubber ducks found in the sea in 1992. That's when a ship transporting bath toys got lost in the ocean while traveling from Hong Kong to the U.S. Some of these ducks are still floating in the ocean several decades later. They've been spotted in South America, Alaska, Hawaii, and even Australia. And they make bath time lots of fun. Ooh, rubber ducky! This is John. John seems to attract all kinds of bad weather and natural disasters wherever he goes. See for yourself. One day, John notices his dog is restless. The pooch keeps scratching the entrance door and wandering around the house. He even tries to hide in the corner, howling and barking. When some mugs start to clink in your cupboard, John realizes what it means. The noise is produced by foreshocks. Many earthquakes leading up to the main event. Earthquakes often happen in clusters. After a few weak quakes, a much bigger one is likely to be on the way. Sometime before the disaster strikes, people might notice bizarre blue lights. Some of them seem to be coming out of the ground. Others are hovering in the air. These are earthquake lights. They may appear days or mere seconds before the ground starts shaking. Now, John is walking along the ocean shore. Suddenly, he sees the water retreat from the beach really, really fast. Uh-oh. John, run away as quickly as you can and find some high ground. A tsunami is coming. And your life might depend on how fast you react. If John spots a bizarre and unexpected rise in sea level, it can be another sign of an approaching tsunami. This happens in 40% of cases. The incoming water is the first tsunami wave. The second one, way, way larger, will come in in about 10 minutes. John can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami is near. Hmm. John feels there's something strange about the sun. Through his special super dark sunglasses, he sees that there's some uneven flares around the star's contour. If these bizarre rays are accompanied by auroras all over the world, they're a sign of a solar storm. Such storms are usually caused by disturbances in the sun's magnetic field. In this case, the bursts of gas and radiation on the surface of the sun get so massive and powerful that they can even reach our planet. Luckily, solar storms aren't really dangerous for people, but they can mess with electricity and even cause blackouts. The sky over John's head is darkening and turning ominously green. Something hits him on the forehead. Ouch! He picks up the offending object. It's a hailstone, but it's not that cold outside, and it's not raining. Soon, he hears some noise. It's approaching rapidly and turns into a loud roar. It sounds as if a freight train is moving towards him, but it's not a train. It's a tornado. The funnel isn't visible behind a cloud of debris, but John can't mistake this rotating column of air for anything else. Are you on the road, John? Then get as far away from your car as you can. Fast! Find a ditch, lie down in it, and cover your head. Oh, you're inside? Then get away from the windows and hide underground if possible. And please, John, be very careful if you spot some conically shaped clouds. Those mean severe storms. And if you notice that such a cloud starts spinning around, immediately search for shelter. The cloud is transitioning into a tornado right in front of your eyes. On the bright side, John should only worry about warm conical clouds. Cold ones are totally harmless. The only problem is to figure out the temperature of the cloud he sees. Duh! Ah, look. John just spotted some weirdly shaped trees. They look like the letter J and grow on a slope. It means the ground under John's feet is likely to be unstable. If he keeps wandering around, it can cause a bad landslide. Square waves appear when two different wave patterns crash into each other. This phenomenon does look kinda awesome. No, don't go into the water, John. Keep watching it from the shore. Cross currents in that spot can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the surface. John keeps walking along the shore. At one point, he sees wild, choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed. This time, he stays out of the water. He knows it can be a sign of a strong rip current. It can carry a swimmer far away into the ocean. How about a walk in the park? John likes this idea. 
The sun is shining and the sky is so blue and beautiful. Suddenly, he spots a rapidly growing vertical cloud. At first, it looks bright white. But as it approaches, alarmingly fast, it becomes dense and inky. The sky is darkening. It's getting windy. That's when the guy notices that his hair stands on end. It's his cue that he's about to get hit by lightning. At this very moment, positive charges are rising through his body. They're reaching towards the negatively charged part of the storm. If he doesn't react fast, these charges will meet. There's nowhere to hide, so John should crouch down and try to make himself smaller than the objects around him. Oh no, John, don't lie down on the ground. It may be damp and thus a great conductor of electricity. There are other signs that scream danger during a lightning storm. John's palms may begin to sweat. He might hear bizarre crackling and buzzing sounds coming from metal objects nearby. His skin can start tingling. There might be a strange metallic taste in his mouth. Plus, John is likely to smell chlorine. That's how ozone smells. Electrical charges split the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the main gases making up the atmosphere, into separate atoms. When these atoms come together again, some of them produce molecules made up of three oxygen atoms. That's ozone. We can smell it during a thunderstorm because downdrafts bring this gas from high altitudes to your level. Some bugs can feel a storm coming. They get ready for a natural disaster by freezing. So when John notices that insects around him look drowsy, he knows to get ready. Oh, and bees can predict heavy rainstorms. These critters begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining. While walking next to the river during a period of heavy rains, John hears a roaring sound. He feels paralyzed with fear. It's likely to be a flash flood moving in his direction. Indeed, he soon sees debris coming down with the flow. The water is rapidly changing its color, becoming muddier and darker. Flash floods are very, very dangerous. Take care of your safety immediately, John. Another day, John sees a spectacular wall cloud. It seems to be stretching for up to five miles. In the best case scenario, it's just a severe storm coming. But if the wall cloud begins to move in a circle, it's a sure sign of a tornado. John is walking across a snowfield in the mountains, listening to the sounds the ice under his feet makes. The noise is kind of hollow. Hmm. Quickly check whether there are cracks around your footprints, John. If so, the chances are an avalanche is about to happen. Soon, John sees an avalanche moving in his direction. He does his best to get off the slope. In most cases, he could probably run it by heading downhill and then veering sideways, but not this time. He realizes he doesn't have enough time and heads for the nearest tree. If John keeps holding on to it really tightly, the avalanche might not pull him along. But if this doesn't work, he should try to swim up to the snow's surface while the avalanche is still moving. On a pretty nice summer evening, John notices leaves with soft stems droop all of a sudden. Ah, uh, it might be because of an upcoming storm. Right before extreme weather arrives, the air usually becomes more humid. Leaves also get damp and heavy, and the wind easily flips them over. John lives in a pretty old house and is used to having cracks in the interior walls. But one day, he notices that some of them have widened. And look, there are a few new ones. It's an alarm bell. He lives in an area with loads of limestone. So new cracks can mean a sinkhole is about to open next to his house. John is hurrying home, trying not to waste time admiring shelf clouds. They look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft. And these ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. 
The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white, and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction and ta-da! you get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? (laughs) Well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the Rainbow Eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. 
Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret – a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia, also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton, or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. Rocks rolling down the slopes of a rumbling volcano, pushing other bigger rocks on their way, and eventually tumbling down into the ocean in a humongous cascade, causing a wave the height of which the world's never seen before. This is what might happen if the Halina slump of the Hawaiian Big Island falls off into the water. The Kilauea volcano is far from dormant. The latest eruption occurred in 2018. Its eruptions are usually accompanied by earthquakes of different magnitudes. And with each quake, the magma rocks on the slopes of the volcano shift down. These rock formations are called slumps, and the Halina slump is the most notorious of them all. In 1868, the shift of this slump caused a tidal wave rising as tall as 60 feet. But what's most troubling is that some 110,000 years ago, a landslide here led to one of the most powerful earthquakes ever, which in turn led to a mega tsunami of over a thousand feet in height. Scientists are worried that such an event may repeat in the future. If that happens, the wave might engulf the whole of Hawaii and easily reach both North and South American coasts. Geologists are quick to reassure, though, that a landslide like this is unlikely to occur anytime soon. It's just too early for that. But when it finally does, the consequences will be catastrophic. Have a nice day! Yellowstone National Park in the western USA is world-famous for its dazzling views, and especially the colorful Grand Prismatic Spring at its very heart. But we should all stay aware that Yellowstone is, first and foremost, an enormous caldera, basically a slumbering supervolcano. The difference between a regular volcano, like Kilauea from earlier, and a supervolcano is that the latter is thousands of times more powerful. Imagine an eruption spewing tons of huge rock and rivers of hot lava, pumping out clouds of ash that make countries stop air travel for weeks. 
And now, multiply all of this by a thousand. This is what a Yellowstone eruption would look like. At first, a huge area in the middle of the national park would shake, crumble, and then blast upwards in a megaton explosion. Lava flows and magma rocks would cover the area of about 40 square miles, roughly half of Washington, D.C. But the greatest danger is the volcanic ash. The ashen plume would rise miles above and get carried by the wind in every direction. Since the eruption would be far from ordinary, the spread and damage would also be much greater than usual. The ash is thick and heavy, so it would cover a vast area in a blanket, destroying crops and even buildings. Worse still, it would spread in the air and block out the sun, leading to a drastic drop in temperature and an artificial winter. Even regular volcanoes can lower temperatures worldwide by a few degrees. A supervolcano may potentially cause a new ice age. Luckily, the chances of Yellowstone supervolcano erupting in the near future, or at all, are extremely low. There have been only three of those in the history of Earth, and there's no evidence such a disaster should repeat. Scientists estimate the probability at 0.00014%, which is lower than the chances of an asteroid wiping us all out. Speaking of which… If dinosaurs could talk, and were at least still alive for that matter, they'd tell you that asteroid threat is as real as it gets. Scientists at NASA say they've tracked 90% of all near-Earth asteroids of significant size, and none of them are a matter of any concern. But there are still the other 10% in the great unknown. What's more, asteroids can change their line of flight because of the pull of other celestial bodies and eventually turn our way. Lucky us! Now, if an asteroid big enough, like a mile across, hits the Earth, it will first cause an explosion powerful enough to erase a dozen big cities in a matter of seconds. Then the impact will raise a cloud of dust and debris that will block out the sun, just like the ash cloud from a volcano, and cause a centuries-long winter on the whole planet. But even if it falls into the ocean, which is more likely, a resulting wave will rise several miles high, washing coastal cities off the face of the planet. But at least there won't be a new ice age. Although scientists are pretty sure there's no such threat in the near future, it can't be ruled out completely, and humanity needs at least five years to prepare for this event. If a big near-Earth asteroid suddenly changes its course and turns right toward our planet, we won't stand a chance against it. Disaster movie, anyone? A much more probable calamity, though, rests right beneath our feet. It's the San Andreas Fault in California. The fault has been ready for rupture for years now, and scientists estimate that an earthquake along this line is likely to occur in the next three decades. And when it happens, it won't be nice. They expect a magnitude of 8.0, which is comparable to some of the most devastating quakes in history. It's all the more dangerous since California is home to some of the most populated cities in the western US, including Los Angeles and San Francisco. High-rise buildings are common there, and they're particularly vulnerable against underground shakes. The San Andreas earthquake might cause a whole lot of damage both to cities and countryside. In the worst-case scenario, the ground might break apart, destroying buildings, farms, and changing the landscape altogether. Still, scientists believe that the probability of such a quake is only 7% for the next 30 years. So there's a rather big chance, um, 93%, that we'll never see that in our lifetime. Yet, there's another earthquake hazard not so far away from the previous one. The mega thrust in Chile. The country sits right above the subduction zone, an area where two tectonic plates meet and go one beneath the other. At the place of their meeting, stress has accumulated because of their continuous movement, and once that strain is too much, a major earthquake occurs. Chile has experienced a lot of quakes in the recent years, and scientists are worried those might be preparing the area for a really big one. They believe a great earthquake is due to happen before the end of the century, and it might be devastating to the coastal area. Even smaller quakes caused tsunamis that flooded the west coast, and a huge one like that is likely to raise a wave of incredible height. On the bright side, Chile now knows to prepare in advance for the coming natural disasters. And geologists are pretty sure people will be able to evacuate before the earthquake strikes. In September of 1859, 
Astronomer Richard Carrington was looking at the sun and suddenly saw a bright flare on its surface. He made a note of it in his records, but only realized how important it was a couple of days later. The energy from that flare reached Earth and struck it directly, causing northern lights to appear above Cuba and burning telegraph lines all around the world. This was dubbed the Carrington Event, and it was a solar storm. Such storms hit the Earth fairly often, but none of them were so powerful as the Carrington Event, neither before nor after. But in 2012, astronomers registered a similar solar flare whose energy nearly hit our planet once again. If it had been just a week earlier, we'd have been in big trouble. Today, humanity relies on electricity in almost every aspect of life, and a powerful solar storm would mess with the electromagnetic field of Earth a lot. All electric appliances would either shut down or short-circuit, and huge transformers powering basically everything would go out of order for good. It would take years to repair them, and the cost of such a massive blackout would count in trillions of dollars. The worst of it is that science is almost unable to predict solar storms. And even if we could know about them in advance, we'd be powerless to stop them. The flare happens in a matter of seconds, and it takes about 8 minutes for the particles to reach the Earth's atmosphere, causing the disturbance. The power outage would come a bit later, in a day or so, when a massive cloud of plasma gets to our planet. At the moment, there's no protection against solar flares, and the chances of one powerful enough to cut all of our electricity in the next few years are quite high, about 12%. The only good thing about all this is that we now know of such a possibility and can at least prepare in advance. Hey, don't forget to pack some underwear and socks. You'll always need those. The Boxing Day Tsunami, Indonesia. An undersea earthquake starts in the morning. Its tremors cause a series of tsunami waves. The largest reaches the height of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Unzen Volcano Mega Tsunami. A powerful volcanic eruption triggers a landslide from a 4,000-year-old lava dome. It sweeps through the city of Shimabara and reaches the sea, setting off a mega tsunami. The Vajon Dam Mega Tsunami, Italy. A landslide drags 9 billion cubic feet of forest, soil, and rock into the lake. A dark wall of water covers the sky over a tiny village at the bottom of the Vajon Dam. Then, with a deafening roar, the wave overtops the edge of the dam, taking out everything in its path. Mount St. Helen Mega Tsunami, USA. As the volcano erupts, the upper 1,500 feet of Mount St. Helen collapses into a massive landslide. Part of this avalanche plunges down into nearby Spirit Lake, which splashes the lake waters into a series of waves almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Alaska's Latuya Bay Tsunami A landslide caused by an earthquake creates a mega wave. It surges over the headland and washes away trees, plants, and soil down to bedrock. Molokai, Hawaii a third of the East Molokai volcano caves in and collapses into the Pacific Ocean. This causes a tsunami the size of the second tallest building in the world, Shanghai Tower. The waves reach Mexico and California. The Yucatan Asteroid Tsunami The asteroid, which is rumored to have wiped out dinosaurs, strikes the Yucatan Peninsula. It creates a mega tsunami, the largest in Earth's history. The first wave's almost twice bigger than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. Hurricane Mitch Mitch forms in the Western Caribbean Sea. Soon it strengthens to become the eighth most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever. The storm pours four inches of rain per hour for two days in Honduras. It causes terrible mudslides and floods. Hurricane Allen Rare and extremely powerful. The storm is one of the few to reach Category 5, the highest possible. It causes more than $2 billion in damage. The Great Hurricane After tearing down Barbados, the storm moves on. It strips the bark off the trees growing on Martinique and St. Lucia and travels further. This horrific natural disaster lasts for six days. Hurricane Dorian it's the most powerful tropical cyclone to hit the Bahamas. The hurricane flattens most of the structures on the islands and sweeps them into the sea. Hurricane Wilma 
The storm occurs in the Caribbean Sea near Jamaica and heads to the west. Two days later, it gathers enough power to turn into the most intense hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Patricia A regular storm develops a well-defined eye and turns into a Category 5 hurricane within a mere 24 hours. At one point, it travels faster than a Ferrari moving at its top speed. It makes Patricia the world's most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded. Kamchatka Earthquake It happens in the early morning 80 miles away from the shores of Kamchatka. The earth tremors produce a tsunami. The first two waves are catastrophic, up to 60 feet high. The third one's much weaker. Valparaiso Earthquake, Chile It happens at about 5 a.m. along the boundary of two tectonic plates. The tsunami, triggered by the earthquake, wipes out 620 miles of Chile's coastline. Tohoku Earthquake, Japan The first earth tremors start at a great underwater depth. The earthquake is so strong, it moves Japan's main island. It shifts the planet on its axis by up to 10 inches and increases its rotation speed. The disaster also triggers a tsunami with 133-foot high waves that travel 6 miles inland. Indian Ocean Earthquake, Sumatra A rupture along two tectonic plates sets off an undersea earthquake. It begins at about 8 a.m. near northern Sumatra, Indonesia. It makes the planet vibrate nearly a half inch and sets off earthquakes all over the world up to Alaska. Good Friday Earthquake, Alaska The most powerful earthquake recorded in North America lasts for 4 minutes and 38 seconds. A 600-mile-long crack causes terrible landslides and a 27-foot tsunami. Areas 200 miles away get raised by 30 feet. Other places permanently drop 8 feet. Valdiva, Chile The great Chilean earthquake starts in the afternoon and lasts for no less than 10 minutes. The disaster affects an area the size of California. It triggers tsunamis that reach the shore of Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. The average tornado usually lasts less than 10 minutes, but there are exceptions. El Reno Tornado It's considered the world's largest tornado based on width. At its peak, the twister reaches 2.5 miles across. The Perryville Tornado, U.S. It occurs at about 2 a.m. and starts with snapping hardwood trees and breaking down stone constructions. Then the whirlwind becomes stronger. It levels two-story buildings, flips and tosses cars as if they were toys. Bridge Creek Moor Tornado When the twister gets into the town of Bridge Creek, its width is at its peak, 1 to 1 and a half miles. The wind speed of the tornado reaches more than 300 miles per hour. This natural disaster causes $1 billion in damage. Manitoba, Canada An outstanding tornado rages for nearly three hours. It breaks tons of trees and utility poles, damages roads and farmhouses, but miraculously misses every town on its path. Tri-State Tornado, U.S. The world's longest-lasting single tornado travels 220 miles through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. The average tornado's path is usually no longer than 5 miles. Tupelo, Gainesville, U.S. An outbreak that consists of at least 12 single tornadoes wipes out everything on its way. The accompanying rainstorms also trigger severe flash floods that make matters even worse. Valjant Landslide, Italy At 10 p.m., a landslide with a volume of 100 Great Pyramids of Giza breaks off from the top of Monte Toc. It falls into the Valjant Dam Reservoir, producing a tsunami wave taller than the Golden Gate Bridge. Yunnan, China An avalanche of rock, stones, and mud, so big it could fill up Sydney Harbor, forms a dam on the Jinsha River. The Hitta River, Japan Triggered by a rainstorm, 300,000 Olympic swimming pools of debris flows down before getting stopped by another, earlier landslide. Along the way, the landslide sweeps two buses off the road. Peru A rock slide dams the Rio Montanero, a long river running through the center of Peru. The whole process takes no more than three minutes, 
which means the landslide moves at a speed of up to 87 miles per hour. It also leaves a trail of debris 5 miles long. The Usoi Dam, Tajikistan Set off by a magnitude 7.4 earthquake, the rock slide falls into the Murgab River and blocks its flow. That's how the Usoi Dam, one of the tallest in the world, appears. Mount St. Helens, USA At 8.30 a.m., after much buildup, a volcanic vent finally gives way and sets off a catastrophic eruption, which makes the entire north side of Mount St. Helens fall away. It's the world's largest recorded landslide. North Bonneville, U.S. In the middle of the 15th century, a great earthquake occurs. An incredible amount of debris rushes down from Table Mountain. It covers more than 5 square miles and blocks the Columbia River with a dam 200 feet high and 3.5 and miles long. In the heart of a dense forest, a person embarks on a forest hike, delving into the hidden depths of nature's playground. But this isn't your ordinary stroll through the trees. It takes a turn towards an eerie and spine-chilling discovery. Our protagonist, with a twinkle of curiosity in his eyes, discovers a burrow hiding in the shadows. Curiosity outweighs mm -hmm. fear, and our explorer comes up closer. It's not some random burrow. This one belongs to a fox. So what if it's the wrong move, and they should just run away? In the joyful season of spring, when nature comes alive with vibrant energy, foxes engage in their intricate dance of life. It's during this time that foxes seek solace in their underground sanctuaries. Throughout the rest of the year, when the world around them flourishes, foxes prefer to bask in the sun, finding comfort above ground, except when the weather takes a turn for the worse. It's in the most inclement conditions that they seek refuge in their burrows, shielding themselves from the elements. These burrows, known as fox earths, typically consist of only a few entrances, occasionally covered with scattered soil and debris. During winter months, industrious foxes diligently dig additional burrows in anticipation of the forthcoming spring. Sometimes, among the remnants of their subterranean journeys, lie the remains of fallen foxes, a testament to the cycle of life within these intricate underground networks. If one were to explore the vicinity of a fox earth, one would notice fresh traces of food remaining outside the burrows during the months of April to June. It's during this period, when playful fox cubs grace the earth with their presence, that remnants of their feasts can be found, a delightful sign of life unfolding. So what do these earths look like? After all, there are other animals with dens in the forest too. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. Fox dens, the elusive abodes of these mischievous beings, tend to be located in areas abundant in lush greenery. You might find these creatures hiding beneath the sheltering branches of a tree or seeking refuge beneath imposing rocks. If you stumble upon a cozy little hole that appears tailor-made for a fox, and you catch a whiff of that unmistakable aroma, accompanied by other intriguing clues like scattered bones, you've likely discovered a fox den. Alas, my curious friend, there's no foolproof recipe for where these sly foxes choose to build their dens. They possess an uncanny ability to adapt to diverse environments, be it open grasslands, dense forests, or even the unforgiving tundra. Picture this. A fox's den consists of a minimum of four to five sections. We have the grand entrance, the ever-important ramp, the main den itself, and a secret room that doubles as a food stash. Depending on the size of the pack, there might be additional rooms to accommodate the whole gang of foxes. Mm -hmm. Now imagine the grand opening to a fox's den. The entrance and the ramp form a corridor leading about three to eight feet deep into the earth, connecting the outer world with the cozy haven within. Ah, but there's more. Foxes, being savvy planners, stockpile their foraged treasures in their dens. Yes, they have their own food caches where they hide all their scrumptious finds. 
the number of rooms within the den may vary, adapting to the size of the pack, as these crafty creatures ensure there's enough space for giving birth and raising their adorable offspring. They might even dig extra tunnels and create additional entrances just to keep things interesting. Now let's talk about culinary affairs. Foxes are savvy gourmands who store food in large quantities, ready to weather the winter and the mating season. However, they're not extravagant hoarders. They usually stash away just enough to last them a few days, considering they don't dine on fresh prey every single day. Berries and fruits often grace their storage chambers, while any delectable meat takes center stage in their culinary adventures. Curious about the proximity of fox dens to one another? Well, if the land is bountiful with abundant food and fresh water, you might stumble upon two or three fox dens within a 10 square mile radius. But if resources are scarce, oh, you might have to expand your search to cover a sprawling 20 square miles to find just one den. But the saga doesn't end there. Foxes, true to their resourceful nature, often have multiple dens. They maintain the primary den, mm -hmm. often known as the natal den, which holds sentimental value. Additionally, they keep a backup den for some unpredictable circumstances. And let's not forget their knack for claiming abandoned or borrowed dens as their own. Such clever tricksters, mm -hmm. aren't they? Now, let's talk about these marvelous creatures themselves. Foxes come in a delightful array of species, sizes, and variations scattered all across our planet. But the star of the show is the red fox, found on every continent except frosty Antarctica. While most foxes prefer the tranquility of rural landscapes, don't be surprised if they venture into the realms of urban and suburban dwellings, where their path might cross with humans. Ah, the encounters between a fox and a human. A tale of two extremes. Some kind souls attempt to win over these animals, offering them tidbits and coaxing them into their palms. On the other hand, there are those who tremble at the mere thought of a fox, fearing their crafty and ferocious nature. Now picture this scenario. What if a fox approaches you or launches an attack? Typically, foxes pose no threat to humans and harbor no ill intentions. They prefer to feast upon small mammals or livestock, reserving their aggression for hunting or self-defense. Yet, there have been reported cases of foxes crossing paths with humans, including incidents. Therefore, knowing what steps to take if a fox approaches or pounces on you is crucial. Foxes can indeed be domesticated, yet they remain wild at heart, and their actions can be wildly unpredictable. They might momentarily embrace their tamed side, only to snap back into their untamed instincts when feeling cornered, threatened, hungry, or simply scared. Naturally, foxes view us humans as potential threats, and it's in our best interest to reciprocate their cautious approach. Never attempt to approach a fox, even if it appears docile and friendly, as its temperament can shift within seconds, catching you off guard. Avoid sudden movements and resist the urge to inch closer, as doing so might agitate or frighten our fox friend. In most cases, when a fox spots a human nearby, it will swiftly scamper away or seek refuge in hiding. However, should you find yourself locked in a standoff with a fox, the best course of action is to take a step back and allow it the space it craves. Should a fox persist in its approach, or if you encounter several foxes nearby, my dear friend, give them a wide berth and allow them their space. Refrain from approaching or attempting to feed them, especially by hand. Let them carry on with their foxy affairs while you observe them from a distance. In a situation where a fox becomes trapped, such as finding its way into a room, I implore you to remain calm. Avoid raising your voice or causing unnecessary commotion, as it may provoke the fox to attack. Instead, remain silent 
keep a safe distance from the creature, and provide it with an escape route. Ensure the doors and windows remain unobstructed, granting the fox the freedom it seeks. In due time, it will make its swift exit. However, if fortune frowns upon you, and you find yourself in the unfortunate circumstance of a fox attack, remember to stay composed. Refrain from unleashing your pets or pursuing the fox. Just allow it to retreat on its own accord. If the fox persists and refuses to back down, a simple round of applause or a few claps might startle it away. Now you can enjoy the forest. North Yungas Road in Bolivia is one of the most picturesque and most hazardous roads in the world. Just imagine biking along a cliff trail at a mind-numbing height overlooking the lush Bolivian jungle and misty mountains at a distance. What a view! But as soon as you realize you're riding on a 10-foot wide stretch of road, some of which isn't even paved, you might get skin crawls. And for a good reason. Over 200 folks tumble to their demise each year on this devious mountain climb. And the absence of any guardrail doesn't help at all. Now, if you're more into walking, consider the Husseini Bridge in Pakistan. It's officially the most dangerous hanging bridge in the world, but hardly the only one in the country. It's a long and nerve-wracking traverse over Lake Borat, with many planks of the bridge missing and the whole construction creaking ominously in the wind. Still, the place has become a major tourist attraction, although the old and broken bridge visible nearby only adds to the impression that you're inevitably going to fall to a screaming end. Well, at least you can be thankful that the lake beneath is not Lake Natron in Tanzania. If you fall into water, you still have a chance of survival. If you fall into the waters of Natron, not so much. The pH levels here are skin-melting 10.5. What passes for water is more like an alkaline soup. No wonder this place is so peaceful. Pretty much nothing wants to live here. And yet, flocks of flamingos come to Lake Natron to breed every few seasons, and it becomes a white-pink paradise for the period. Positively. Which can't be said about the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia. Despite its beautiful, otherworldly landscape, it's perhaps the loneliest place on Earth. Yellow, orange, and green mounds are made of salt, sulfur, and iron, creating views like nowhere else on the planet. Yet the combination of temperature and toxic minerals makes this place absolutely unlivable. Researchers coming here haven't found even microscopic life in this valley. Really, like another planet. Beautiful and desolate. On the other hand, there's an island that's bubbling with life, yet still you don't want to be there. It's called Snake Island, and the name says it all. It's chock full of snakes. In fact, there are so many of them, especially the venomous varieties, that Brazil has forbidden access to the island to any and all visitors. But even if it wasn't closed off, not many would be brave enough to go to a place where a single step offshore could land you a venomous bite. Now, I'll bet that Fly Geyser in the middle of the Nevada desert was created partly because humans became jealous of that. This place had been just another bit of desert until 1916, people came here to drill a water well. They quickly saw the error of their ways, though. The water came out boiling hot and unfit for drinking. Fifty years later, there was another attempt, but the same thing happened. We don't learn, do we? Anyway, hot water never stops spewing from under the ground. And today, we have a massive geyser cluster colored in shades of red, orange, and yellow. Now, I say let's take a break from things that could bite, burn, or crush you and take a walk in a serene forest. We're in Japan, and it's Sagano Bamboo Forest, a marvelous natural park where you can't help but hush your voice and just look. And listen, too, because the sound of the wind in the bamboo trees is the first ever officially recognized soundscape. All the more surprising to find such a place just half an hour's ride from Kyoto, one of the busiest cities in the country. 
take a deep breath of fresh air now. You're gonna need it. We're going underwater. Behold the Great Blue Hole, apparently named by Captain Obvious. It's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Located off the coast of Belize, this giant sinkhole is a massive tourist attraction, especially popular among divers. It's actually a whole cave system, and they say it gets weirder and more picturesque the deeper you dive. Beware, though! It's popular among sharks, too, and both bull sharks and hammerheads have been spotted here more than once. Here, have a towel and prepare for some barbecue. The Darvasa gas crater is waiting. A huge hole again, this time in the ground and burning. Over 50 years ago, geologists found this spot in Turkmenia, Central Asia, and were quite a bit alarmed. There was an enormous deposit of methane, a highly flammable gas, underground. They set it on fire to prevent the gas from spreading, and since then, the holes kept burning. It's over 200 feet across and 100 feet deep, and no one knows when it'll finally run out of fuel. Is it too hot again? Well, let's have a little swim with jellyfish then. Jellyfish Lake on one of the rock islands in Palau is perfectly described by its name. In 2005, there were about 30 million of these creatures here. Although today only 700,000 of them remain, their number is growing, and tourists can actually swim with them. Until they get stung, that is. Okay, kidding. These jellyfish don't have stingers, so it's safe. Until they decide to grow stingers, of course. From the depths, we're going even deeper. The Gomantong Caves are our next stop. The cave system on the island of Borneo could have been Batman's hideout, given how many bats live there. At night, these nocturnal animals fly out of the cave in the thousands, making you wonder why you're still there watching it. But if you're brave enough to go inside the cave, you can truly marvel at the variety given to us by nature. Because there, on the floor and walls of the cave, lie tons of bat droppings, giving food and home to millions of cockroaches, parasites, and giant centipedes. Wondrous. Okay, I'm out of here. Now, if you're as easy to get away as I am, here's a place to go. Medidi National Park in Bolivia. It's one of the largest protected areas in South America and is home to an immense variety of animals, birds, and insects. I could do without the mosquitoes, but it's still among the few places where you could see wild macaws, monkeys, capybaras, and dozens of other creatures. Still, it's better to be careful because wild animals aren't always happy to see you and there are known cases of attacks on tourists. Ever wanted to feel like Frodo Baggins in Middle-earth? Here's your chance! In Iceland, there's a slumbering volcano named Thrigúka Gegurth that welcomes guests to a tea party. Now, don't confuse this with another infamous Icelandic volcano, Eyjafjallajökull. Yukuk. Yeah, it's easy to mix them up, they sound so similar. Here, tourists are actually ushered down into the volcano and spend close to an hour inside, looking at the magmatic landscape. They say Thrinuka Gegur can't wake up all of a sudden, but who knows? Don't forget to bring the Ring of Power just in case. From the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, and here we are at Mount Hua in China. It's called the most dangerous hike in the world for a reason. It's high, it's crazy scary, and it's a hike. At the height of 7,000 feet, which already makes me reconsider, there are several wooden planks nailed to the sheer wall of the mountain. When you get to the start of the hike, you put on safety gear and realize there's no turning back. You have to walk all the way. And then back! But if you're lucky, you'll see a crowd of hundreds of tourists and decide not to spend hours waiting for your turn. Finally. To really creep you out, I'm taking you to Pripyat in Ukraine. If you watch the TV show Chernobyl, you probably know what happened in this area. If you didn't see it, well, don't have a meltdown. Much of the town is still off-limits for visitors, but there are already guided tours around the place. As haunting as it is, the landscape has some magnetic force. The silence makes you keep as quiet as you can. Also, you can see with your own eyes what happens when people abandon a whole city. Nature takes back what once belonged to it. Creeping vines along the walls and lampposts, trees and bushes sprouting from under concrete. And the main attraction in this desolate place is the rusty old Ferris wheel.
That sure shivers my timbers. Are you a pro swimmer? Brave enough to take a dip in any ocean or sea? Bad news. There are some places you should avoid no matter how well you swim or dive. Some of these places have dangerous underwater rocks, strong currents and tides. Others are famous for legends about monsters and mysterious creatures. So let's dive into this aquatic horror show. Have you ever heard the word the strid? It's a variation of the word the stride that is used in Yorkshire. And it refers to a narrow section of the river wharf that's so small you could jump over it. But don't be fooled by its size, it's one of the most dangerous spots around. Even taking a step into the water can have dire consequences. The river wharf has a forceful current, and since the strid is so narrow, it's even stronger in that area. The intense water flow has eroded the limestone around the strid, which created hollow spaces much deeper than the rest of the riverbed. Here's the secret. The current has also weakened the banks of the strid from below. So, the ground you're standing on, admiring the rapid flow, is probably just a fragile ledge hanging over treacherous waters. There's no record of anyone who found themselves in the water of the strid and found their way out of it. And the worst part? You wouldn't even guess that this innocent looking stream could be such a danger. So, my advice to you, my friend, is to stick to a safer body of water for your aquatic adventures. If you're looking for a weekend getaway in California, Horseshoe Lake is the spot for you. It's got everything. Sandy beaches, hiking trails, and picnic areas, but wait, there's more to it than meets the eye. This lake has a dark side, namely around 100 acres of dead trees that surround it. And it's not just the trees that have been claimed by this lake. The earthquakes that hit in 1989 and 1990 unleashed carbon dioxide from under the hot magma. The gas seeped out into the air, damaging all the life around the lake. Even now, Horseshoe Lake is just as dangerous as it was 30 years ago. What makes it so scary is that the levels of this toxic gas change randomly. Warning signs that are posted everywhere certainly could give a horror film touch to a fun hike in the woods. In Kauai, Hawaii, there's a group of stunning waterfalls that used to be a popular destination for tourists. Kipu Falls, as they're called, were once the go-to spot for swimming and diving. To get to them, you had to take a long walk along a dirt path until you finally arrived at a breathtaking view of a 20-foot waterfall pouring into a crystal clear pool below. But since 2011, this area has been off limits to the public. Why, you ask? Well, there have been a lot of accidents at Kipu Falls. Obviously, jumping off the top of the waterfall would be an obvious reason for that. But in addition, there were much more mysterious cases. Witnesses tell tales of swimmers peacefully enjoying the pool at the bottom of the falls, only to be suddenly dragged under the surface. No definite explanation was found to these accidents. The locals believe that the water spirit Mo'o is to blame because it doesn't appreciate being disturbed by loud tourists. There's also a theory of a powerful whirlpool at the bottom of the pool. In any case, guide publishers do not mention Kipu Falls anymore, and trespassing is severely punished. The Samizan Hole, located in the Gulf of Thailand, is the ultimate spot for thrill-seeking divers, but it's also the most dangerous one. With a drop of 280 feet, it's the deepest diving site in the region. But its depth is not the only reason it is considered a place to avoid. The area is a major shipping zone for giant oil tankers. The strong currents around the hole make diving even more treacherous. And if that's not enough, the Samisan Hole is also home to deadly barracudas that could easily attack unsuspecting divers. The water is so murky that visibility is nearly zero making it challenging to spot these aggressive sea creatures. All in all, the Samisan Hole is a breathtaking but extremely hazardous spot that should only be explored by experienced divers with nerves of steel. Let me tell you about New Smyrna Beach, the shark attack capital of the world. If you're looking for a relaxing vacation spot in Volusia County, Florida, you may want to reconsider this beach. The waters around New Smyrna Beach are teeming with fish, which attracts a lot of sharks. In fact, there have been so many shark attacks reported in this area 
that it's earned the title of the shark attack capital of the world. Even scientists have warned that if you go for a swim there, you're bound to get up close and personal with at least one of these creatures. We are talking about a distance of 10 feet, and in many cases you wouldn't even notice it. To make matters worse, the bull shark, one of the most dangerous and aggressive types of sharks, has been spotted in these waters. Once again, Kauai is on our list. The beach on Nepali coast called Hanakapiai Beach might look like heaven on earth, but don't be fooled. To get there, you have to trek through a super steep, rocky two-mile trail. There are no lifeguards on this remote beach, so even if you decide to take a dip in the water, you're on your own. The biggest threat to your safety is the incredibly strong rip currents. They are almost always present because there are no reefs to shield the shore. And if someone gets caught in one, there's no safe place to swim to for miles. The nearest safe beach is six miles away. Trust me, this beach doesn't have the best track record in terms of safety. So it's highly advised that you stay out of the water if you end up at this beach. Let me tell you about a place that looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. We're talking about Berkeley Pit, which is an artificial lake situated in Butte, Montana. The first thing you'll notice about this place is that it has an eerie blood-red color that can only be described as unsettling. You might be tempted to take a dip, but that would be a grave mistake. Don't even touch it. The water is extremely dangerous due to the heavy metals present in it, such as cadmium, arsenic, zinc, lead, and copper. They come from the rocks that surround the lake and make the water super acidic. In fact, this place used to be an open pit copper mine, hence its color. So if you want my advice, avoid this place like the plague. There are three lakes in Africa that maybe are the most dangerous places of all that I have mentioned so far. They're all located in Africa. Lake Monoon and Lake Nyos in Cameroon and Lake Kivu in Rwanda are all like ticking timers ready to go off. They were formed over underground pools of molten rock. And sometimes this molten rock releases toxic gases like methane and carbon dioxide right into the water. When this happens, the gases can build up until they suddenly burst out of the water, creating massive waves that can wipe out everything in their path. This type of outburst is called a limnic eruption, and it can release a cloud of poisonous gas that can be harmful to everything in the vicinity. The most terrifying part? These explosions can happen at any moment with no warning. So if you ever find yourself near one of these lakes, you'd better be on high alert because you never know when the next accident might happen. Maybe you know other places you wouldn't recommend for a fun swim? Share your anti-recommendations in the comments below. You're going to Ilha de Quiamada Grande, one of the most dangerous islands in the world. There, you find yourself among rainforests, huge rocks, and grasslands. The place is home to birds, locusts, and giant cockroaches. But there's one more animal, and because of it, the island got its notorious reputation. Snakes live there, and a lot of them. So many that the place is also known as Snake Island. Will you survive there? Located just 20 miles away from the coast of Brazil, the island has an area of 43 hectares, or over 100 acres. It probably got cut off from the mainland after the last ice age. The snakes were also separated from most other animal species. They didn't have competitors and had an unlimited source of food. In such a small area, there are up to 4,000 snakes. That's one snake for every 10 square feet. It would be a difficult feat not to come across a snake on this island. Not only is this snake, the golden lancehead, one of the most numerous on the island, but it's also a highly venomous pit viper species. And it's also one of the most venomous in all of Latin America. Its venom is so potent due to the isolation of the species, with only birds sharing the land with them. To catch these birds, the snake's venom needed to become extra strong. And indeed, since they got separated from their distant relatives, their venom has become up to five times more powerful. Most of the time, these snakes hide in the trees or amongst leaves on the ground. If you find yourself stranded here, 
you'll want to keep yourself a safe distance away. Snakes mainly use their sense of smell and rely on vibrations. If you get too close to one, either stand still or slowly walk away. If you make too many vibrations, this will make them feel threatened, causing them to strike. If you spot them a safe distance away, or if you're walking toward tall grass, stamp your feet a couple of times. This will notify snakes of your presence. They won't risk taking down prey larger than they are and will likely slither away. Carrying a stick is always a good idea, just in case you happen to come across a snake accidentally. This way, you'll have an extension of your arm that cannot be bitten. This simple thing might save your life. A stick with a V-shape on the end will give you even more advantage. Even if a snake starts acting aggressively, holding it down will stop it in its tracks. But whatever happens, don't try to pick it up. Okay, but what if you get bitten? The chances are pretty high on this island, of course. First of all, don't try to get the venom out on your own. Make sure you call emergency services immediately. And once help is on the way, apply a wide bandage. A piece of clothing will do if you don't have anything else. Don't try to chase the snake trying to identify the species. Emergency services know how to figure out what venom it is. Now, just keep calm and wait for help. You might be wondering who you can call on this abandoned island. Well, since it's strictly prohibited to visit this place, there are signs advising to stay away all over the island, along with a number you can call if you run into trouble. Let's say you've successfully avoided getting bitten. The next thing to consider is what you can eat there. Snake Island was previously known as Ilha de Quemada Grande, where Quemada is Portuguese for forest being lit up or forest fire. The reason for that was the fact that the entire island was deliberately set on fire to make room for a banana plantation. Unfortunately, the banana business didn't turn out to be a success, probably because farmers got sick and tired of snakes. But some banana trees still thrive today, and they can provide you with some much needed nutrients. You'll also want some protein in your diet throughout your stay. Luckily, along with the snakes trapped on the island, there are also cockroaches. These giant prehistoric-looking roaches come out at night to feed on plants. Get that barbecue started and enjoy the rare delicacy this island provides. A great way to survive on the island is to avoid it altogether. If by chance you happen to be sailing past, keep in mind that this place was once connected to the mainland. Rocks beneath the waves are very likely to damage the bottom of your boat if you get too close. Make sure you keep an appropriate distance when traveling past. Sure, this island is intriguing, but please remember that no matter how close you get to it, you won't be able to see snakes from the boat. You can only see these creatures if you get close enough, which you really shouldn't do. And it's not only reptiles that make this location dangerous. Pirates visit the island quite often. Not the sea shanty singing peg-legged arr pirates, but bio-pirates who come there to capture the very thing that makes it so dangerous. They come there for snakes, to catch them and sell them illegally. Since the island got cut off around 11,000 years ago, the golden lancehead has evolved within its own unique habitat. So, although there are many reptiles on this island, they're still an endangered species. Due to their limited numbers, their value is very high, reaching up to $30,000 on illegal markets, which gives biopirates the motivation to catch them. I can think of better ways to make a living. Anyway, let's say you've got all the resources necessary to survive in one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Do you think you would manage this feat? Perhaps you think it's impossible. You'd be surprised at how possible it can be, if you know what you're doing. It turns out many have visited this scary place before. Research teams often come there. They study the golden lancehead snake, its environment, and its food sources for conservation purposes. But scientists always make sure there's a doctor on the team. There's also a lighthouse on Snake Island. It had been operated by people until the 1920s. Then it became automated. One guess why. Brazilian authorities visit the lighthouse once a year to make sure it's still functional. Locals on the mainland know the reputation of the island so the stories of people going missing are minimal. But one group of fishers once got too close to the island. As they were sailing along their normal route, they accidentally neared the shore. 
their boat hit a rock under the waves and began filling with water. As the boat was quickly sinking, the men had only two options, to try to survive in the rough sea or swim to the shores of Snake Island. It was a hard choice to make. After all, they had heard the stories, and it wasn't just about snakes. Rumor had it that the island was cursed. Regardless of the stories, the fishers chose to take their chances with Snake Island. After making it to the shore, they tried to be careful. Their knowledge of the island could help them survive. Most importantly, they knew to avoid the rainforest at all costs. As the men got hungry, they carefully walked along the edge of the forest, warily collecting bananas. They were mostly sitting, waiting, and conserving their energy. They could only drink water when it rained. It was just enough to sustain them. They slept on the beach, unprotected from the elements and weather. And all the time, they were so close to the comfort of the lighthouse or caves. They were probably overly cautious, but it was either enduring some discomfort or risking their lives for a dry bed. They didn't yield to the temptation. They managed to survive for three days without being bitten by a snake. After that, a passing boat finally rescued them. So, now you know, anything is possible. Oh, gravity, you heartless so-and-so. Well, that's what I think when I trip over a stone and fall face down. Of course, I'm not clumsy, you know. Anyway, gravity is a constant, right? Something entirely unshakable that we can always rely on in this ever-changing world. Unlike, you know, love. Feeling romantic, sorry. But what if I told you that it's not as honest and clear as you think? There are places on our planet where gravity behaves like it's gone crazy. And that's why you clicked here. So let's take a look. Magnetic Hill in Leh, India. There's a stretch of road in India that's been attracting tourists from all over the world. It's no different looking from the surrounding landscape, and you could easily pass it by without noticing, if not for one very unusual and a bit creepy thing. If you stop your car on the magnetic hill going up the slope and put it on neutral, it'll start crawling upwards, eventually reaching the speed of up to 12 miles per hour. They say there's some sort of magnetic force at work here that tugs cars up the hill, hence the name. On top of that, even airplanes are said to gain altitude above this place. Skeptics offer another explanation, though. It's just the lay of the land that creates an illusion of going upwards, while in fact, you're moving down the hill and vice versa. Whatever the truth, I'd like to see it for myself. Would you? Tell me down in the comments. The Crooked Forest, Poland Near the village of Nova Charnovo, there's a forest in the depth of which you can find a strangely-looking pine tree. Planted in the 1930s, there are 400 trees that sharply twist to the north almost at the roots and then grow upwards in a semicircle. Although scientists offer different theories about the tree's weird growth, nobody can say for sure what made them look like that. Some say it's people who did it, while others believe it's a gravitational anomaly that somehow pushed the trees down. The trouble with this version, though, is that it would have had to stay there for years, and that only affected the trees. Still, no certain explanation exists anyways, so who knows? A waterfall, Faroe Islands. Ever seen an upward-moving waterfall? You can have a look at one on the Faroe Islands, halfway from Iceland to Scotland. But if you were expecting me to tell you an unbelievable story about a mysterious force pushing the water up the rock, then sorry, no such thing here. The truth, however, is quite jaw-dropping anyway. The winds in this place are so powerful that they lift the water and throw it back up. I guess it was this kind of wind that allowed Mary Poppins to travel on her umbrella. Sounds good. In fact, this waterfall is not unique. There are several more places on Earth where winds create an illusion of defied gravity. For example, there's the Kinder River in England that has a waterfall constantly struggling with the wind. It's so strong that half of the Cascades' water seems to just fly up without ever touching the bottom of the drop. Hoover Dam in Nevada, USA if you ever get up to the top of the dam, which is about 726 feet high, you can try a little trick. 
Take a bottle of water and pour it over the edge. You'll see the water flow up instead of spilling down. Once again, this isn't really any magic or unnatural phenomenon. The wind up here is simply too strong for the water to fall, just like with the waterfall on the Faroe Islands. Here though, it looks even more impressive since you can do it yourself. Dokabi Road, South Korea Another gravitational anomaly located on a road. Locals once found out that if you put an empty can or a bottle on the ground, it will immediately start rolling uphill. Unlike other such places in the world though, Dokabi Road doesn't just create an illusion. When you walk down the slope, you don't feel as if you're going up. Everything's pretty normal. But once you put down an object that can roll, it will do that in the opposite direction than it should. Local authorities were quick to get the idea and put a signpost directing curious tourists to the mysterious road. Golden Rock, Burma If you happen to be in Burma, these days it's also called Myanmar, make sure to visit this well-known site. A gold-leaf-covered boulder sits upon the edge of a cliff, and a small pagoda is built on top of it. The impressive thing about the rock is that it only lightly touches the cliff for support. In fact, it looks like the boulder will fall any minute now, but it has been standing like that for centuries. On top of that, the pagoda built upon it is not really a recent addition, so it's quite an unusual sight to see. The rock seems to be saying, gravity? Hmm, I don't care about that stuff. The legend has it that what keeps the boulder in place is a single strand of Buddha's hair. Well, I don't know about that, but you can check out the rock for yourself and see that it's not attached to the cliff by anything. And yet, it's not budged for 2,500 years. Something must be at work here, huh? Stone of Davasco, Argentina If there ever was a thing that said, I defy gravity out loud, it's the Stone of Davasco. The huge 300-ton boulder stands precariously on the edge of a cliff and rocks a little bit from side to side in the wind. People even checked it by putting glass bottles under one of its edges. They exploded with another movement of the rock. Unfortunately, today you can't see this wonder of nature as it was a century ago. In 1912, the boulder suddenly dropped from its perch, which it had occupied for literally hundreds of years. The people in the nearby town of Tandil were so sad about this event that 95 years later, in 2007, they decided to restore the stone. Well, not exactly put it together chip by chip, they made a plastic replica of the rock and put it on the same spot and even in the same position. So even today, coming by Tandil, you can see its famous balancing boulder. More of a symbol now, of course, because it's no longer rocking and only weighs 9 tons but instantly recognizable nonetheless. Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA Remember this place from the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind? If not, you should go watch it, but not right now. This place doesn't make you feel like you're witnessing some magic and doesn't really trick gravity right before your eyes. Sounds almost boring compared with the rest of the sites on my list, right? But the true mind-blowing feature of Devil's Tower is that scientists can explain how it came to existence in the first place. You see, it's an 867-foot rock formation with walls so steep they're basically vertical. But that isn't even the main thing. This piece of stone just rose amid rolling plains of Wyoming with nothing like it for miles and miles around. So how is it that such a flat landscape could have suddenly given birth to something so tall? Theories abound, but nobody has the answer yet. My theory? Well, perhaps here is where the Earth has a giant Audi belly button. Well then, you come up with a better theory. Oregon Vortex, USA The house of mystery in Gold Hill, Oregon amazes its visitors with gravity-defying effects. You can't stand straight there, always leaning to the side and having to hold on to something for balance. Balls roll upwards. And there's also a broom that stands perfectly still wherever you put it, unlike virtually everything else in this shack. The local Native American tribes called this place the Forbidden Ground, even before the house was built there, and they avoided approaching it. The owners of the shack, though, decided to turn it into an attraction, and they succeeded. 
they created an atmosphere of mystery around the place and spread the news about it in newspapers and later on the internet. And voila, a perfect anomaly is made. In fact, it's no more than a curiosity, a human-made optical illusion that tricks your eyes and other senses. Hudson Bay, Canada Okay, we've talked about some pretty ambiguous stuff. But now it's time for the real deal, the Hudson Bay Anomaly. This is probably the only place in the world where gravity is indeed lower than anywhere else on the planet. Even skeptics can't smirk at it because the difference has been measured with precision equipment. So does it mean that the gravity here is as low as, say, on the moon then? Unfortunately, or is it luckily, I'm not sure yet, the difference is minuscule. The exact value is 0.005% or 1 200th of a percent. You won't be able to feel it even if you try your hardest, but it's still there. Scientists say this anomaly exists because of the ice sheet that covered the area about 10,000 years ago. It compressed the rocks so much that they still can't fully recover, shifting the gravitational field in Hudson Bay. Sometime in the future, though, the gravity will return to normal in this area as well. No moonwalk for me, then. Puna Grasslands, Peru. A bare desert, rocky land, and one big nothing. Oh no, wait! There's Ureta! Ureta is a flowering plant that looks so unique, you might actually think it's photoshopped. That's how different it is from the rest of the desert. At first sight, it looks like some rocks covered in moss. But we're talking about a 3,000-year-old plant found in the freezing Puna grasslands of the Andes. This plant grows in packs, and they're so dense you could stand on top of a Ureta shrub, and it'd take your weight without problems. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world. A polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. Rio Tinto, Spain For more than 5,000 years, the Red River has been surrounded by mines full of copper, silver, gold, and other minerals. They give the river its unique reddish color. People were mining that area for centuries until the whole industry started to fade out. The mines remained abandoned until they were rediscovered in the 18th century. The river is quite impressive, but it's also very dangerous for people because of its high acidity. The bacteria in the water create similar conditions that can be found in some other places in our solar system. For example, scientists believe there's something similar on one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. An acidic ocean is hidden underneath the moon's surface. Toyama Bay if you're walking along the shore of Toyama Bay in Japan, you might be lucky to see mystical neon blue light. It's coming from underneath the water and lighting up the night sea. There aren't many places where you can see a phenomenon like this. It's the firefly squid that's responsible for the breathtaking show. The creature lives at a depth of more than 650 feet under the surface. But in spring, they gather near the coast. Sometimes, waves even wash them ashore. The light these animals emit is actually camouflage, which helps them to hide and protect themselves. During the day, the squids go back to the deep, but they come back to party near the shore at night. The light they produce isn't so bright you could read a book in the dark, but it's still quite impressive. Fly Geyser, Nevada, USA. Imagine you're in a space rocket at one point, you realize you've entered the atmosphere of some unknown planet. You haven't even realized it's there. The planet's gravity starts to pull your rocket down. Soon, it crash lands on the surface. Luckily, your spacecraft is sturdy enough to stay intact. So you pull on your spacesuit and crawl outside. 
right in front of you, there's something you've never seen before. Incredible nature, unbelievable colors, and a bizarre mountain-like thing. And suddenly, it spews out a column of boiling water. You shake your head. Ah, this vivid imagination of yours. You're actually in Nevada, looking at Fly Ranch Geyser. Don't get disappointed, it's still marvelous. The geyser appeared in the 1960s when a geothermal power company drilled a hole. This allowed the groundwater to escape. And the colors similar to those you can see in Yellowstone National Park? All because of algae. Speaking of Yellowstone, that's another place that looks as if it's been imported from another galaxy. On an area bigger than the states of Delaware and Rhode Island combined, there are more than 10,000 hydrothermal features, 500 geysers, and incredible waterfalls. Singi de Bemaraha, Madagascar. Now here's the place where you can easily imagine meeting some ancient animals. You can almost see them hiding somewhere among the pointy rocks going up to 330 feet. Half of this national park is covered in forest, and the other half is rocky, formed by the erosion of water. The place is home to many animals, like chameleons, iguanas, frogs, and lots of different lemur species. Vatnajökull Glacier, Iceland On your quest for the extraterrestrial wonders of our planet, don't forget to drop by Iceland. There, you'll find the biggest glacier in all of Europe. In some places, the ice can be more than 3,000 feet thick. Vatnajökull has 30 outlet glaciers ready to be explored. Those are channels of ice that once flew out of an ice cap, but remain stuck within the borders of the valley. As for famous Icelandic ice caves, they're formed when meltwater runs through a glacier trying to get to the surface. This usually happens in the summer when temperatures are higher and the water flow is more turbulent. When the temperatures go down, the water freezes. That's how the caves are shaped. Staffa, Scotland, UK Staffa is an uninhabited island that looks like a place from a different planet. Once you see it, you can't shake off the feeling it hides plenty of secrets. In reality, though, it's a calm spot, almost completely taken over by seabirds and seals. Even so, no one can argue that the incredible rock columns give this place a unique and mysterious look. It's always encouraged local people to spread legends about the unusual cave. The columns themselves formed millions of years ago, mostly because of volcanic eruptions. Glowworm Caves in New Zealand Imagine finding an entrance to a magical cave. You row your boat, eager to sneak a peek inside, and get rewarded with one of the most beautiful views ever. You see a closed cave that looks as if it's under a magnificent starry sky. You don't need to travel all the way around the Milky Way to find something like that. Glowworm caves in New Zealand are there for you. The caves started forming millions of years ago, and now they have an impressive collection of stalagmites and stalactites. But what makes them really special is glowworms. The caves are home to thousands and thousands of luminescent larvae. Worms need to attract insects and potential partners. To do that, they use their tails that glow in the dark. There are lots of caves like this in the area, and people have been exploring them for over 100 years. Wulingyang Scenic Area, Zhangjiaji, China This amazing place has breathtaking sceneries and more than 3,000 sandstone pillars. They look as if nature decided to make its own version of skyscrapers. Some of them are half as tall as the Empire State Building. Usually, you can't even figure out where the pillars start. All you see when you try to make out what's there at the bottom is endless mist. Two natural stone bridges seem to be floating among the pillars lost in the clouds. The Eye of the Sahara That's a mystery that's remained hidden for millennia. This geologic formation is difficult to spot when you're standing on the ground. That's why it wasn't discovered until people started to explore space. For some time, scientists thought it was an impact crater created by some space object hitting Earth's surface. But after doing the research, they found out the origin of the eye was entirely Earth-based. 
These days, geologists believe the ice formation started over 100 million years ago, when plate tectonics were pulling apart the supercontinent Pangaea. Molten rock, which was rising toward the surface, created a massive dome made up of different layers. Later on, volcanic activity and erosion finished the eye's look. Baikal Lake, Russia The deepest, the oldest, and one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the world is bound to have some secrets of its own. The lake is frozen from early January to May. In the summer, the water is so clear you can see up to 130 feet down. That's because melted ice from the Siberian mountains is incredibly pure. There are also no mineral salts in Baikal. Salar de Uyuni, Bolivia It's one of the most extreme places in South America. The world's biggest salt flat stretches for over 4,000 square miles. It appeared when prehistoric lakes evaporated thousands of years ago. A thick, salty crust extends beyond the horizon. At one point, you're not even sure where the land ends and the sky begins. The Atacama Desert, Chile The world's driest desert is all about rocky landscapes, salt lakes, dunes, and extreme temperatures. In some parts of the desert, there's been no rain for almost 500 years. With no water or nutrients from the ground, there are no plants. That's one of the reasons why you might feel as if you're on another planet, like Mars. But wait for the night to fall. An infinite sky full of stars looks like a window to the universe and its mysteries. The Avenue of the Baobabs is probably the most incredible and surreal avenue in the world. To see it, head to Madagascar. It's not the only giant thing you can find there. This island is also home to huge comet moths. Their wingspan is crazy, up to 8 inches. So you don't even need to look for iffy bottles with drink me signs on it to significantly shrink in size. Wakuchina looks like an oasis in the middle of a desert. Oh wait, it actually is a desert. But unlike many others, it has a bunch of clubs and bars. A fun thing you can do there is sandboarding and even bodyboarding. Make sure you've got the glasses on and your mouth's tightly closed. The Tunnel of Love in Cleveland, Ukraine is completely covered with plants. Some couples believe that if they go through this two-and-a-half-mile-long tunnel together, their dream might come true. Be careful what you wish for, though. There are trains going through this tunnel three times every day. The dark hedges in Northern Ireland seem a bit creepy because of the legend that surrounds this alley. The locals say the road is haunted by the ghost called the Grey Lady. By the way, guess what TV show was filmed here? In northern Portugal, there's a wonderful house that looks like a prehistoric building, almost like a cave, but it's an actual cottage. It's called Casa do Penedo, which literally means boulder house, and it's a tiny museum now. From far away, it looks like a huge stone and a perfect dwelling for some mysterious creature. Another such abode is in Italy, somewhere in the middle of Rishenzi. It's an artificial lake created as a result of flooding. This place is famous for its 14th century church standing right in the water. So the only time you can get there on foot is in winter, when and if the lake freezes over. One lake you can definitely take a stroll on is Baikal. No wonder, located in the heart of Siberia, it freezes over every winter. It's so large that it has 27 islands on it. It's also the deepest lake in the world, reaching almost 5,400 feet. Off to hot waters. Grand Prismatic Spring in Wyoming is the largest spring in the U.S. and the third largest water source of this kind in the world. Don't you dare swim there! Not only is it boiling hot, you'll also have to face a fine for that. Enjoy it safely on the shore. Mont Saint-Michel in Normandy, France is a top fairy tale destination if you ever wanted to feel like a prince or princess. The magnificent castle is surrounded by water, but not all the time. It all depends on the moon. The highest tide can be seen 36 to 48 hours after a full moon. 
When I was there, I saw only a deserted area with a few puddles. A night sky with thousands of stars has those romantic vibes, but the literal sea of stars probably has even more. Welcome to the Maldives' Vathu Island. The beaches here glow blue at night, thanks to the bioluminescent plankton in the water. You didn't think these were real stars, did you? If the stars don't interest you that much, you'd likely like the sky full of balloons. Cappadocia, a region in Turkey, is originally famous for incredible rock formations, but it also attracts visitors thanks to its wonderful hot air balloon experience. For those who always wanted to walk on clouds whenever they peeped out of the window on a plane, good news, guys! You can do just that in Bolivia. It's not a literal cloud, but an extremely large salt tile. It's called Salar de Uyuni, and it mirrors the sky during the wet season, creating that illusion of infinity and walking on the sky. In Colombia, make sure to visit the Las Lajus Sanctuary. To get to the church itself, you'll need to cross a bridge that seems to be hung right in the air, and there's some fast-flowing water underneath you. Well, we're back in France. It's Colmar Alsace region, and just look at these houses. Colorful facades made of timber, canals all adorned with flowers and cobblestone streets. Germany is full of cities with these cozy gingerbread houses, and Rothenburg ob du Tauber is not an exception. It's an almost fully preserved medieval town with dozens of multicolored facades and authentic taverns. It looks especially magical in winter, with snow-dusted roofs and awesome holiday markets. In Iceland, many houses have grass roofs. Such dwellings are called turf houses, and grass on top of them has multiple functions. It not only decorates, but also protects houses from heavy rains. The grass grows in the foundation made of lava rock and needs regular trimming. In Costa Rica, on the islands of Isla de Caño, there's an assortment of about 300 circular objects of different sizes. Locals call them las bolas, which is simply the balls in English. These stones have an almost perfectly round shape. Some of them are huge, weighing up to 16 tons each. They're also made of different materials – gabbro, limestone, and sandstone. They're considered to have been put in lines in front of the chief's houses. Nobody knows for sure where those balls came from, but some myths claim they originated from Atlantis. A place called Angel Fall speaks for itself. It does look idyllic. It's the world's tallest uninterrupted waterfall, many times taller than Niagara Falls. The water falls in cascades and much of it evaporates on its way down, which creates an illusion of those beautiful clouds. If you're into dazzling shine, try visiting the Grand Crystal Cave in Mexico. You can only do so under professional supervision, but it's definitely worth it. Chances are you've never seen a crystal twice your body size. In Morocco, there's a town called Chefchaouen in which the prevalent color is sky blue. Not azure, not cornflower blue, and not turquoise. Most dwellings there are painted the most beautiful shade of blue you've ever seen. The place is not easily accessible. It's located in the Rif Mountains. One more sky blue place is Santorini, which is probably a bit more easily accessible. The dwellings are painted white, but almost all the roofs are of a vibrant blue shade. The white paint is to keep the heat away and make sure you've got the most Instagrammable location. In Slovenia, don't forget to visit one of the world's most spectacular spots, Lake Bled. The color is truly aquamarine. Nope, it's not photoshopped. Right in the middle of the lake, there's a cliff which is actually a small island. There's a castle and a couple of other dwellings too. To sweeten the trip even more, try a piece of bled cream cake baked with a secret recipe. When you first see a photo of Moraine Lake in Canada, you'll probably believe it's either photoshopped or painted by a professional artist. But this place is real, combining a myriad of blue shades that feel so idyllic you don't want to ever leave here. Bagan, the mysterious land located in Myanmar, has all the ingredients to be a truly out-of-the-fairy-tale spot. 
you can enjoy all the exotic vegetation, misty mountain landscape, and numerous temples riding a bike, or you can see it from a hot air balloon. The Philippines have a bunch of things to see, but there's definitely something special about local beaches. If you ever go there, the hidden beach in the El Nido itinerary is the perfect place to enjoy some solitude. The beach is securely protected from boats and unwanted weather conditions by limestone coves. In the Italian region of Liguria, there's dozens of precious beaches you'll never forget. Bay of Poets in Porto Venere is one of them. The beach is located right on the cliff, and there's also underwater caves you can swim into. It's called Bay of Poets because the legend says Byron got inspired there, swimming across the bay in search of his muse, which he eventually found. The area Cinquateri is in Liguria too, and is really close, so if you always wanted to see those Italian cliffs and sea wallpaper in real life, head there. The legend has it that seamen would paint their houses bright colors to find the way home easier. The Isle of Skye, Scotland, could be a perfect decoration for some historical TV show about proud knights and their maidens. There are also probably some fairies in the fairy pools and fairy glen. The must-see here is the Old Man of Stor, a hill that combines rocky and steep sides. There are no legends or anything, but it's one of the most inspiring and photographed areas on our planet. At first sight, if you take a look at it from the land, it'll seem just a stone bridge. But its main secret is to look at it from the water. The bridge reflection forms a perfect circle that looks like some sort of a portal to a hidden underwater world. It's located in Saxony and is just a short drive from Berlin or Dresden. In the northeast of Thailand, a family of enormous stone whales swim through a forest. These aren't real whales, of course. They're actually a part of a 75 million year old rock formation. A long time ago, this part of Thailand was just a desert. The movements of the Earth's crust push sandstone up to create these fascinating mountains. Reachable by anyone willing to spend a day hiking up the network of trails, this landmark is becoming increasingly popular with tourists. Once you reach the back of one of the whales and look down on the endless sea of green below, you'll know why. On these hikes, you'll find waterfalls, a wide variety of exotic plants and animals, and from the very top, you can even look straight across to the neighboring country of Laos. Their shapes look just like whales swimming together. No wonder this place is called Three Whale Rocks. What a way to see Thailand on the back of a giant stone whale. While digging in a Canadian mine in March 2011, a worker made a shocking discovery. They found a nearly perfectly preserved nodosaur specimen. This extinct dinosaur weighed in at around 3,000 pounds and grew to 18 feet. Despite being over 110 million years old, the nodosaur was so well preserved that you can clearly see the heavy body armor and scaly skin that covered it. It took almost an entire year of painstaking work to uncover the incredible find. The fossil was finally unveiled in a Canadian museum in 2017. Unexpectedly, analysis of the skin showed shading that the nodosaur may have been capable of camouflage, like modern-day geckos and moths. This is in addition to the spines and scales that already make it a walking tank. Still being studied today, this nodosaur could go down as one of the most important fossils discovered in a long time. Its detail could help us to uncover even more of the mysteries of the past. The Voynich Manuscript is the world's most mysterious document. Since its discovery in 1912, the manuscript has been a complete mystery to everyone that comes across it. It is heavily illustrated with strange pictures of alien plants, unknown objects, and the zodiac symbols. But the most interesting aspect of it is the writing. The language used in the text is completely indecipherable. No one knows what it says, who wrote it, or where it was written. We don't even know if it was a real, functional language or if it was just created for this one text. The drawings of different plants are equally intriguing. Most of the plants in the manuscript are identifiable as plants, but they don't match up with any known species. 
A professor of applied linguistics in England claimed to have deciphered some of the characters in the book, but we haven't managed to uncover any more information about this mysterious text. If you're ever going to head down under, don't forget to pay a visit to the mystery craters in Queensland. Halfway between Bundaberg and Jinjin is one of Australia's most baffling finds, and that's saying quite a lot for Oz. In 1971, the site belonged to a farmer growing zucchini and potatoes. As the farmer tried to expand his farm, he kept hitting large rocks in the fields while plowing. When he took a closer look at the rocks in his way, he found marine fossils and some strange craters. The farmer passed his finds on to geology professors, who set out to research the formations. When the geologists began digging around the area, they uncovered a huge layer of sandstone and ochre stain that was completely covered with craters. There were 35 craters in total, and the layer of rock is estimated to be around 25 million years old. The scientists studying this mystery believe that hot springs, former ocean activity, and meteors are the prime suspects behind the craters. And I'd like to know about the characters who named those towns Bundaberg and Jinjin. <laughs> what fun names! Now, the Antikythera mechanism is an ancient computer of sorts that's still baffling scientists with its extraordinary design. Around 2,000 years ago, a Greek ship sank off the coast of the island of Antikythera. The wreckage was discovered in 1900, and divers salvaged some of its ancient artifacts. When archaeologists started sorting out the discoveries from the wreckage, they came across an object that didn't seem to fit with anything else. The wreckage was ancient, but they found an incredible device that seemed far too technologically advanced. The machine functioned as a calculator, allowing its user to follow time, the movement of stars, eclipses, moon phases, and even countdowns to events like the Olympics with amazing precision. This level of technology is almost impossible to explain coming from an ancient Greek wreckage. No mechanism would come close to the machine until the 14th century when geared clocks began to be built in Europe. How was the device created so long ago, 1400 years before its time? Could the sinking of the Antikythera and the loss of the calculator have held the development of technology back by hundreds of years? Meanwhile, the Caucasus Mountains near the Black Sea are one of the few areas of Europe that haven't experienced much human impact, even though most white-skinned people in the world are referred to as Caucasians. Despite this, archaeologists have found many ancient megalithic structures in the area. The house-like structures, known as dolmens, contain jewelry, bronze tools, and assorted pottery. Archaeologists don't know who built them, why they built them, or what their true purpose is. The stones were either two stones held together by a large stone as a roof, or smaller stones stacked as walls with a hole only on one side. There have even been stone plugs found that to seal whatever is inside. What's even stranger about these stone formations is that they aren't just found in the Caucasus. They're found all over the planet, in Australia, South Korea, Colombia, Africa, and even France. Their purpose is unknown, so all scientists can do is speculate. The discovery of the tomb of the first emperor of China in 1974 is well documented. Who could forget the finding of 8,000 terracotta warriors protecting the entrance? Most of the statues are warriors, each with their own unique facial expressions. There are even full-size terracotta horses and chariots too, just for extra protection. What isn't well known is that some areas of the tomb haven't ever been entered yet. Archaeologists are very reluctant to open the site because the whole area is unstable. There might be something amazing inside, but no one wants to risk losing an amazing piece of history. Eventually, researchers will send tiny robots into the unopened tombs to give a better idea of what's inside. Until then, archaeologists have to wait a little bit longer for the secrets. In southern Costa Rica, people have discovered a collection of mysterious stone spheres. There are over 300 scattered around the landscape 
and some are almost 7 feet across. No one knows their purpose or how they were produced. One thing we do know is the material they were made from – gabbro, a volcanic rock. Carving the stones into their perfect spherical shapes would have taken a lot of time and effort. Researchers think they might have been made by a now extinct group, using barely any tools. The best theory is that they used small stones to chisel away at the edges of boulders, before using sand to smooth the sides. Some think that they may have an astronomical purpose, or even used as markers to point the way towards something. But no one knows anymore. Their significance is lost with the civilization that created them. Off the southern tip of Japan, and 75 miles from Taiwan, lies the Yanaguni Formation. A local diver first noticed these formations in 1986 while searching for new dive sites to take tourists. Seeing the large steps that resembled a pyramid, he thought he discovered an underwater city. Some archaeologists believe that the structures could have been signs of a fabled Pacific civilization, like Atlantis, that vanished beneath the waves thousands of years ago. There are also reports of marks in the stone, suggesting quarry work. Some people even claim that there were faded images of humans and animals carved into the stone. None of this is backed with much evidence, though. Most experts believe that the formation is natural, and the symmetry of the rocks has been overstated. They are not as straight as reported, and it appears to be solid natural rock, rather than carved blocks. In other words, the resemblance to a sunken civilization is just a coincidence. In Turkey, archaeologists believe they might have found the oldest known architecture in the world, over 10,000 years old, according to experts. Found in an area that used to be home to ancient farming communities, these monoliths, which stood up to 18 feet high, were likely used for social events and rituals. Not much is known about them, though. These large stone structures seem to be human-shaped, with images of animals carved into them. Nearby, researchers have found signs of domestic housing, suggesting that these amazing monuments might have signaled the start of the move towards modern civilization. The Kimbaya artifacts are some of the most interesting artifacts ever found. The most curious thing about them is how closely they seem to resemble modern airplanes. They're so aerodynamic that modern scientists believe they might even be able to be used as blueprints for a functioning aircraft. In 1994, two aeronautical engineers created larger-scale models of these artifacts. They prove that the designs fly, with a little help from modern engines. What's really astonishing is that these objects are possibly thousands of years older than the first airplane by the Wright brothers. Just another one of our world's fascinating mysteries. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.